father so-and-so has been committing adultery. Even today in, in the church, many women have adulterous relationships with their pastors who they refer to as their spiritual father. Even though Christ made it clear, do not call anyone on earth father. That title is reserved for who? For your father in heaven. How many of your, your spiritual leaders have corrected you when you called them rabbi and said, do not call me rabbi? You have but one master and he is in heaven. How many of your, your leaders have told you when you called them father or spiritual father? How many of them have corrected you and said, do not call me father? For you have but one father and he is in heaven. Or do they welcome these titles? Do they welcome the titles? Because in doing so, they can also welcome the power that that title brings. It goes on to say in 10, nor are you to be called teacher, for you have one teacher, the Christ. Now, how many of you believe that all of that was referring to that group of people at that time and that when Christ left here, it would no longer apply? If that's the case, if you believe that, then you would have to also believe, well, then he was simply telling his disciples, your father in heaven is not the father of the rest of humanity because I'm telling you specifically that you do not call anyone else father because you have but one father who is in heaven what does that say for the rest of us who he we were not physically present when he gave that command does it mean that okay well we can call people father or was Christ giving that message to humanity If we keep it in context, we would have to say, yes, he was. In fact, giving the message to humanity through his disciples. Who would come to record the information. And, and it was recorded and it was given to us. So I would have to suggest that the correct interpretation means that we are not, even today, in this day and age, that we are not to be calling anyone father, anyone rabbi, anyone teacher. Is this the first time you've heard this? Would be the question. Is this the first time that someone has told you this? And if so, ask yourself why. I'm going I'm, I'm to suggest to you the reason why. It goes on to say, The greatest among you will be your servant, for whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You shut the kingdom of heaven in men's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. Woe to you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You travel over land and sea to win a single convert. And when he becomes one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as you are. How much work do you see being put in? By individuals who actually tell you unless you do X, Y, and Z, the way they believe it should be done you are not really a believer is that not shutting the kingdom of heaven in your face is that not stripping you of your right to belong to your father and how can a flawed being sinful in his makeup tell you that you are not welcome in your father's home but don't they do it haven't you seen it? Haven't you had conversations with individuals that have had to suffer it? 
This is why he says do not call them teacher. Because what do many of them teach? Many of them teach hell. They teach the concepts and the ideas and the doctrines of demons. Which is to force you to believe that you are not welcome in the presence of your father. Which nullifies, which voids the sacrifice of his son. Because his son was sacrificed for your sins that you might be able to enter in and have communion with your father. Which is why the veil was torn. But these individuals who seek acclaim, they seek position, they seek titles, they seek power in their perverse ambitions. They continue the practices of Pharisees. Which is why it's most important that you get into your word for yourself. You have to stop finding reasons to believe that you are not worthy to read your word. That your father is angry with you. That your father isn't speaking to you. That your father doesn't love you. He knows you. He knows what you deal with. And as long as you employ men and women to have a relationship with God for you, you will continue to suffer in your sin the way you do. You've been told you need a pastor. You only need a pastor because you know he gets into his word and you don't. If you got into your word, you would not need him. Although you may fellowship with him, it wouldn't be based on necessity. Because God isn't going to give him anything more than he's giving you. And God isn't going to give you anything more than he gives him. Much of what you see and count as prosperity is really a hustle. Much of what you see and count as blessings really have come from the ingenuity of thieves. You have to have a relationship with your father for yourself. I'm not saying that there isn't a time and a season where individuals sharing information is important because that's what I'm doing right now. It is very important for people to share revelation. It is very important for people to communicate understanding. It is very imperative that people give information that they have gained to inspire others to seek it out and gain the same and then even more. But you have to go into these situations with the perspective of one who is simply trying to attain what is uh, uh, there to attain that you might add to what you already have. Independent of the source. Because the source may be a stranger. The source may be one who has a good word at that moment, at that time, in that space. But an hour from now, we'll be smoking crack. An hour from now, we'll be fornicating. An hour from now, we'll be making deals with devils in darkness behind closed doors. The devil knows the word. If the devil was willing to come and try to tempt Christ with the word and Christ is the word, how much more will he come to you with the word and try to tempt you? And Christ rightly divided what came to him. What, what, the, what the devil said that was correct, he repeated. But what the devil left out and or said that was incorrect, he added or he corrected many of you can't do that because you're not in your word so when a devil brings you a lie you can't correct it when the devil brings you and half uh, 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 brings you part of the truth but not the whole truth you can not add the rest of the story or the rest of the statement or the rest of the command because you don't know what it is